So what's missing from the literature? What is missing is a model that promotes generalization and maintenance of the new voice to all spoken communication without, without relying on one specific voice production technique. Because quite frankly, as a clinician, I don't just use resonant voice. I don't just use loud voice. I don't just use twang or yawn sigh or whatever it happens to be in your bag of tricks. I need the flexibility to determine the voice production technique that facilitates the best vocal output based on the physiology of the baseline phonation pattern of my patient. So if I understand what's going wrong in their old voice production, then I can try stimulability to determine what voice production techniques will achieve the best physiological output. And I want that flexibility. I don't want to just use one technique. So that is a big hole in the literature. So therefore, to fill that gap, I've proposed the global voice therapy model. And you can read more about this in a paper that was published in 2012 in the International Journal of Speech Language Pathology to read more about the pilot work that I've done with the GVTM. My work is the first and only study to address this idea of negative practice, this idea of random practice, which we'll talk about using the new and old voice. The GVTM has a unique treatment hierarchy, bottom-up treatment hierarchy, unique from the other voice therapy models discussed in the literature. The voice therapy models in the literature go from sentences, uh, reading passages, directly into monologue or conversation. But there needs to be additional steps between sentences and monologue conversation that help to promote generalization and maintenance of the new voice. And those steps are what I've proposed, memorized speech acts and specific spontaneous speech acts. 